Good morning, monkeys. Today I want to talk about why you do not trust those people that you think you can trust. Because believe me, if you're doing anything wrong out there, people are going to tell on you so fast in order for them to not go to jail, they will put you under the jail. And I don't care if you think it's your family. I don't care if you think it's your friends. They will tell on you, bro. And trust me. So I started running around with kids when I was young, 15, 16 years old, and we would steal and we would do drugs and we would do a lot of crazy things. And you form a bond with these people after a while and you think you have something with them, man. And it's like, hey, he would never do this. He would never tell on me. He would never do that. That's the people that's f***ing your old lady. That's the people that's stabbing you in the back every single f***ing chance they get, bro. And that's a promise coming from somebody that got six years in prison for robbing a pharmacy because he got snitched on. Now, I did the crime, bro. Don't get it twisted. I did the crime. Nine times out of ten, if I got busted for a crime, I admitted to the crime and I did my time. I never snitched on anybody in my fucking life, but I got snitched on. Thought these people were my family. Thought they was my best friends. His father was like my father. His mother was like my mother. I treated his sister like my sister. Now, again, we were all strung out on drugs. So how we acted then versus how we would act now is probably two totally different people. But point being that I trusted these people with my life and they got charged with interstate transportation of Oxycontins. Now, when they got charged and the feds picked them up, how fast do you think it was before they told on me? As soon as they could get out of the jail, they were in the jail for about two months and then they get out and they hit me up and they're like, hey man, what's up? Da, 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 da. I'm gonna come get you. Okay, come and get me. So he comes and picks me up. Now here's the fucked up part about this whole story that really made me know that these people were snitching before they ever got a chance to snitch. Now the crime that I had committed had been committed in 1998. And here we were in like 2002, 2003. I knew I had been investigated for the charges. They couldn't bring charges against us. And they said that the feds was picking it up because the state couldn't get us, right? So once these people got arrested, they go into the feds. The feds let them out in about two months time. Now, this is a little fishy to me right off the top. I'm like, how do you have enough time to do like 80 or 100 years in prison, but you're home after two months? absolute red flag right off the top so when i get a hold of these people they call me i call them i can't remember exactly how it was but they want to talk they want to hook up we're gonna talk okay cool let's hook up now every time we had ever talked about this robbery or anything that had anything to do with the robbery no one ever said names no one ever said exactly what happened and if they would even reference it to me it would be in the eyes of someone else doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like that pharmacy robbery. It wouldn't be the pharmacy that you robbed. It would be that pharmacy robbery. And then they would talk about it. So I knew immediately when they start asking questions in the first person as in, so Jamie, when you robbed that pharmacy, how did this, that, and the other work? Soon as that question come out of this fat fucker's mouth, bro, I knew that he was wired. Immediately, this is something he never spoke about before. And as soon as he said that, I'm like, okay, motherfucker snitching. So I'm going right into defense. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't rob no pharmacy. Well, he kind of knows that I robbed a pharmacy without me ever telling the fucker that I did. He kind of knows that I did. So he keeps on pushing. He keeps on pushing. Well, how about this? Well, how about that? Every question he asks is something that is going to be an admittance from me. So I do not admit anything. I know from the get-go. We get in the car. We ride over. He's asking me questions. We get to his house. We go inside to his house and his wife is even asking me questions, okay? Like she knows he's wired. She can sit over there and ask the questions. And if I answer it the way she wants me to answer it, then there I am snitching on myself. So I'm like, nope, I don't know what you're talking about. Didn't rob no pharmacy. Didn't do anything like that. No. But I can't believe that this is going on, man. Like, these people are my people. Like, like I love these people like family, man. You know what I'm saying? I trusted these people with my life. We did a lot of crimes together. We did a lot of drugs together. I built their house. When I met these people, they lived in a trailer with no front door knob on their front door. Like, the door just opened and closed. Barely had heat. I stayed there a couple times when I was a kid. And I remember getting off of the couch we had to sleep on. And sitting over top of the vent with my 
blanket over me so that the little bit of heat coming through that vent would actually warm me up while I was there at night. So when they started getting the oxys, we built the house for them. I mean, of course, they paid for all this stuff with oxy money. They paid me to build the things with oxys and oxy money. You know, finished building this house, built on additions, built this big garage, you know, bought this nice car, bought this other nice car, bought this new nice car. Had all this stuff, bro, from going to doctors, getting oxys, and coming back and selling them. So they get busted. Interstate transportation of oxycontins to Tennessee. Now, this is going to get you a good couple of years. You know what I'm saying? You're looking at 80 to 100 years. But they know the whole time that they can tell on me. So once they got busted, they tried to snitch on me. I wouldn't let them snitch on me. But the worst part of the whole story is when we come to the end and he's dropping me back off at my house, he says to me, I have a few of those things, which means oxys, if you know anybody that wants any. And I don't remember my exact words to him was like, bro, I'm getting ready to go to jail. I'm trying to quit. But if I hear anything, I will let you know. Conspiracy charge. That right there got me a conspiracy charge just for saying those words right there. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. Feds charge me with conspiracy. So when they do charge us, they charge us with robbery, use of a firearm during a robbery, a conspiracy to distribute Oxycontin, and then I think it was distribution of Oxycontins. I can't even remember what the fourth charge was. But those dudes threw us under the bus. The oldest one that made the most money did two months in jail. And then he came out and snitched. His son might have sat in jail for about a year and a half. And he snitched. And I know for a fact that they snitched from several ways. Number one was my lawyer. Cottonmouth. When my lawyer showed up with the discovery, it had everybody's admittance on there. Had their names right there. Had exactly what they said on there. And the amount of people that snitched, the amount of people that the police asked in order to have snitch was amazing to me. Like there was six or eight people on my paperwork, all of them snitches, all of them out here in the world today. You know, the dude that I bought all my oxys from, snitch. The other dude I bought all my oxys from, snitch. Another dude that robbed a fucking pharmacy that I had nothing to do with, snitch. Then another shit bag from around here that some of y'all might know if you're from around here that fucked some kid up when she was really, really young and then went to prison he snitched too. So the people that you think might be your friends, the people that you think are your buddies that you're buying drugs with, that you're doing drugs with, that you're doing crimes with, they don't give two fucks about you, bro. I promise you that. They will throw you under the bus and then they will get in the driver's seat and they will run the fuck over you. So if you're wrapped up in that game, man, watch who you trust. And if you can't get out of that fucking game, just get out of that game, man. All that shit right there is people that you don't want to mess with. Everybody that's involved in the drug game, the robbing game, the stealing game, any of that type of shit are people you don't want to deal with, bro. None of those people are honorable. None of those people are respectable. You might respect their gangster, but when it comes time, their gangster is going to crumble apart under 40 years time. When they're facing 40 years and they can throw you under the bus, they're going to throw you under the bus. It takes a solid motherfucker to not snitch, especially when you're facing all that time, bro. I remember when the feds got me and they came in and they told me and Steven, they said, if you can convince me that you didn't have a gun, I will drop all of the charges except for the robbery charge. Okay. And we didn't have a gun. So we fully convinced him that we didn't have a gun because we told two separate stories in two separate rooms and we hadn't had time to talk about it and our storage was the same. Because when we got out of the cop car before talking to the DA, I happened to see Steven and I told him, I said, bro, I'm just telling the truth. He said what he said. If that's what he's going to do. I'm just telling the truth about what we did. That's all you got to do and we're going to be done with this. But once we did get done telling them what happened for our crime, he asked us if we wanted a downward departure. Now, if you don't know what a downward departure is in the feds, a downward departure means if you want to snitch, we will give you less time. We will take time off of your sentence after you're convicted for you getting us time on another person. And that's exactly what happened right here, man, is these dudes knew that they were going to be convicted, but if they were going to get 20 years and they could snitch off 18 of it or 19 years and six months, then that's what they did because... They definitely told on us. But anyways, he asked me, he was like, what do you know about these crimes, right? 
And he asked me about some murder in West Virginia. And I'm like, bro, I don't know nothing about no murders. Like everything that they named off, I legit didn't know anything about. But even if I would have known anything about it, bro, there's no way I would have wanted to go forward into the federal system, into the world, and have anybody know that I wasn't man enough to stand on what I did, bro. If you're out here and you're standing on business, and that doesn't matter if you're doing legit business or illegal business, you got to stand on that, bro. You're making a choice. You're making a choice to rob something. You need to face the consequences. You're making a choice to go over here and get in a fight and then you get your jaw broke. You need to suffer the consequences of your choice. It took me a long time to learn that, man. It took me a long time to learn that. They're like, your choices are going to decide your future. Decide who you hang out with. Decide who you can trust. You know what I mean? Because, dude, I'm telling you, so many of these dudes, hell, I was snitched on when I was 15 years old by a local dude around here named JC. Sent the police straight to my house. Ain't seen him since. That was when I was like 15, 16 years old. There's too many people out here snitching, and in today's culture, it's acceptable. Like, they don't even care, bro. You can go in front of the judge and name off every single name you want, and then when you get back out, they'll still buy your rap album. Like, this is the world that we live in. I didn't grow up that way. So even though I'm not involved in all of that culture and craziness out there, man, if, if I could save you some time in jail, if I could save you from that person betraying you and stabbing you in the back the way that I was, bro, look at your friends. Look at them. How do they talk about other people? How do they talk about your other friends to you? Because that's how they're talking about you behind your back too, bro. So you got to watch out for people, man, because people will definitely, definitely throw you under the bus really, really quick. Anyways, man, I enjoy telling you all these little stories, man. I'm not super prepared for these all the time because, hey, I'm just talking to you the way I would be talking to anybody else, man. I don't like scripting these videos and doing all that kind of stuff. I just have a little subject. I come out here and park in this field that I'm not supposed to be in, and then I make these videos. I don't know whether you're enjoying this video in the morning or in the evening, but whenever it is, man, light you up a fatty, sit back, listen to a little story, and go on about your business. If you want to support this little channel, man, I do have a store now called SpankingMonkeys.store. I have all kind of shirts and things on there if you want to go check them out, man. I want to offer you something for you to wear as well as you being able to support the channel at the same time. If you don't want to buy any shirts or anything like that, man, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, share this video, comment, tell me what y'all thought, man. Have you ever been snitched on? And it's amazing how many people I know that are snitches that still walk around to this day. Like, and people just accept them like, hey, man, it's okay. Come on over here, Ted. Come on over here, Todd. I don't care that you got people locked up in prison and didn't do your time, you little bitch, you little coward. <laughs> ah, fuck it, man. Moral to the story, snitches are cowards. If you got a bitch up and tell on your buddy, instead of doing your time, you are a bitch. Later.